The universe is an incredible place, filled with planets, discoveries, and exciting new missions. While we might be enticed to look further and further into space, there are plenty of mysteries left unanswered closer to home. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three discoveries made within our own solar system. NASA is monitoring a huge escalating anomaly in Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field is an incredibly important aspect to our planet that we do not often talk about, not outside of science lessons at least. The magnetic field can help us keep on track, keeping our compass needles pointing north, but it also keeps our planet habitable by deflecting solar winds that otherwise would threaten to strip away the ozone layer. You might not discuss the magnetic field on a regular basis, but it's a truly valuable player in maintaining life as we know it at home here on Earth. Lately, however, something strange has been happening to that valued player, with NASA feeling the need to actively monitor and track an anomaly found in the magnetic field where the magnetic intensity seems to have dropped. There seems to be a huge area in the magnetic field which is notably less magnetic than it should be. An area spanning over South America and Southwest Africa has been impacted thus far. This unusual occurrence, known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, has been toying with the minds of scientists for years now. The American Space Agency has a number of satellites and spacecrafts orbiting in space, many of which orbit Earth. The concern here is that with the magnetic field being weakened, there is a greater exposure to the charged particles headed our way from the Sun. The South Atlantic Anomaly does not impact life on Earth. It will have a significant impact on the spacecrafts in orbit of Earth. As they circle our planet at their low orbit altitudes, these crafts will inevitably pass straight through said anomaly. We believe that during these periods where they pass through, the lessened strength of the magnetic field can cause some disturbances in the technology used within these satellites. They can short-circuit, malfunction, and all manner of similar problems can arise where they are struck by high-energy charged protons from the Sun. Typically, if a satellite is hit by one of these particles, then the impact is not usually too severe, usually only what is considered a low-level glitch. However, there is the risk that a large amount of data can be lost when this happens, or even cause permanent damage to crucial elements of the machinery. Between all these possibilities and the increased threat these charged particles propose, it is more necessary than ever for the operators to shut these crafts down before they make it into the area impacted by the South Atlantic anomaly. NASA has begun to keep a closer eye on this, looking at both how best to protect our resources in space and at understanding the science hiding behind this complex phenomenon. Geophysicist Terry Sabaka from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said, This magnetic field is actually a superposition of fields from many current sources. It is the current assumption that the primary source of this is the molten iron in the Earth's outer core, approximately 3,400 kilometers below the surface of the Earth. This molten iron moves, and that movement produces electrical currents that contribute to our magnetic field. It seems as though the lack of consistency in this movement could be where the anomaly is seemingly arising from. Another contributor could be the African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. This is a huge mass of dense rock, around 2,900 kilometers underneath the continent of Africa. This seems to also disturb the generation of the magnetic field, propelling the drastic weakening. Furthermore, the tilt of Earth on its magnetic axis only heightens the impact of this. The way in which the large low shear velocity province impacts the South Atlantic anomaly was explained further by NASA Goddard geophysicist and mathematician Wei Zhe Quang, who said, The observed SAA can also be interpreted as a consequence of weakening dominance of the dipole field in the region. We still have plenty to attempt to unravel about this strange occurrence, with some suggesting it is dividing and plenty of questions that remain unanswered. Nonetheless, this has been impacting our planet for many years and will continue to do so in the future, though we are yet to see how that will impact our space exploration.
As we have continued observation and monitoring, our understanding, actions and predictions will hopefully become more accurate and better informed. Curiosity rover captures tiny mineral flower on Mars We have carried out a lot of research into understanding the places around us in space, and the red planet is no exception. Life on Mars is a thrilling concept we have spent decades looking for. Unfortunately, this is not what scientists have stumbled across, despite initial thoughts. This discovery is exciting nonetheless, and certainly worth making note of. The Curiosity rover, one of NASA's rovers on Mars, captured a photograph on the 25th of February 2022 showing us a beautiful, detailed photograph of what looked like a tiny flower on Mars's surface. In reality, the dainty one centimeter wide flower is a mineral deposit, despite its striking resemblance to a coral or a sponge. Though Curiosity took this shot near Aeolis Mons, sometimes better known as Mount Sharp during Gale Crater. Which spans 154 kilometers, these little mineral flowers are scattered and somewhat common all throughout Mars. This floral-shaped rock has been named the Blackthorn Salt. It's a diagenetic feature which, according to Abigail Freeman, a planetary scientist and the deputy project scientist for the Curiosity rover, means that it was created from minerals in the rainwater that was once on Mars, having previously mixed with Martian rock back when Mars had liquid water. Essentially, these minerals are formed through a combination of rock types brought together thanks to the rain. She explained that there are diagenetic features around Mars that show up in a similar size to this, though they don't always have the dendritic, branch-like flowered shape form that the blackthorn salt does. Sometimes, Freeman reports, they can be a little more rounded or even spherical. Today, almost all of the water on Mars is solid, frozen, and exists as ice, with small amounts lingering in the atmosphere as vapor. Though we already have established, and it's a largely accepted notion, that in the early history of the Red Planet, there were large amounts of liquid water. This hypothesis has been presented due to the evidence we can see through rocks and minerals, like the processes outlined by Freeman in this research. This isn't the first time that dendritic diagenetic shapes have been observed on Mars, though this photograph taken by Curiosity does feature a particularly stunning shape. Curiosity has stumbled across several diagenetic features within Gale Crater itself. It's important that we keep tabs on and continue to explore, research, document and discover new diagenetic features such as the Blackthorn Salt since it can help us place a timeline to try and learn when the liquid water seemingly disappeared from Mars. We can learn about the history of the planet and when, if and how long for, the planet could have potentially been habitable for life. We continue to search further into space for life, though it seems that even much closer to home, there is a real possibility that life once existed. Shoemaker Levy 9 left dark, ringed scars on Jupiter Comets are often spoken about in our favorite books and films as once-in-a-lifetime unmissable events. The reality is, comets can fall into orbits and patterns allowing us to observe them for decades. One such comet is Shoemaker Levy 9. Discovered in 1993, Shoemaker Levy had already been ripped into pieces with more than 20 fragments moving in a two-year orbit around Jupiter. It should come as no surprise, then, that we have had some questions about what exactly happened to this broken-up comet. Further observations were made following the discovery, leading scientists to believe that the comet, when it was a single unit, may have had a close encounter with Jupiter back in 1992, but that the tidal forces, which are incredibly powerful due to the planet's gravity, tore the comet apart. Our estimations suggest that the comet had been orbiting Jupiter for about a decade before this, beginning in the early 1980s. It is quite rare to see a comet fall into fragments like this, though what is even rarer is that the fragments then collided with Jupiter itself. NASA had a spacecraft, the Galileo Orbiter, aligned to observe what they refer to as the first time in history two bodies collided in the solar system, an event that took place from July 16, 1994 through until July 22nd. 
It was revealed that these fragments crashed into Jupiter with a force equivalent to 300 million atomic bombs, leaving what NASA described as dark ringed scars along the surface of the planet. The high speeds of Jupiter have seemingly wiped these scars away now, however. It's incredible to see how even the smallest fragments can have lasting impacts upon the solar system and how much we are able to watch and observe from right here on Earth. There are plenty of brilliant discoveries out there waiting to be uncovered. There are endless, unlimited opportunities out there in the universe. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.